Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rahakwadash. The double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I was uh, doing some thinking. I put together a series of scriptures and I wanted to ultimately discuss you know, how our people, Israel, have always you know, ran, you know, um, particular customs, all right, and rituals down, you know, they, they, they played it out, you know, to the point where even in the book of Isaiah, as we get, you know, you read how uh, Isaiah 1 and 13, the Lord says, bring no more vain oblations, you know, these sacrifices to get you back in good graces with the Most High, okay, uh, incense, which these are all customs, and technicalities that came with that first covenant okay and our and our forefathers ran it you know under they ran it out they played it out to where the lord was like you you're full of you know so you listen he says uh incense is an abomination to me all right the new moons and sabbaths the calling of assemblies i can away with it it is iniquity even the solemn meeting your new moons and uh, your appointed feast my soul hateth there are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. So all of these particular rituals and, and uh, you know, historical things, you know, passed down as uh, ways and cultures, you know, the, the laws, you know, particular customs that, that came with this family line or that family line. Jake ran it, you know, into the ground to where they, were, they, they, they wouldn't change it internally, but they would have all of these outward things that they can point to. And say, look, we're, we're doing what the Lord requires of us. Okay. Now, when you read down to verse 16, it says, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil. Learn to do well. You see that? Learn to do well. Seek judgment. And this is how you know. All right, and, and, and when you look at the majority of the people that are walking around boasting in these fringes, when you look at their works, when you look at who they are, how they operate, it's not in line with the Holy Spirit. They're off. They're unfair. Okay? They're, uh, they're, they're over-righteous, self-righteous. They're, they're doing their own thing. All of them. Even Konath from Fopi got on the fringes. Everybody got on fringes. And it's become this this fad and this this thing where it's, it, where where the the true understanding of those fringes is not really being pushed upon Israel, man. What it means internally, and we here, all right, the true followers of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, we link everything in the law to Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai was a fulfillment of the law. He is who, who we look to. All right, he is our high priest. He's the sacrifice. He fulfilled everything that that first covenant required. So all we have to do is just walk in his path. Follow the lamb with us wherever he goeth, man. But that comes with an internal way that Israel has refused over the years to address. And they're back here today in the same spirit, man. Learn to do well, man. Seek judgment. And our people, uh, judgment is geared towards their, their, their flesh. It's not geared toward the spirit. Okay, so the Heavenly Father, <laughs> you know, uh, Jake has went the route of all of these outwardly things, even uh, as he's saying, wash you when you go into it. Um, you know, this is uh, Jeremiah 2 and 21. It says, yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Speaking of Israel. All right, they, they, he planted you a noble vine, but you've become a degenerate plant. Okay, a wild olive tree. All right, that bought, brought forth strange <laughs> grapes. It was uncultivated. All right, it wasn't, you know, being kept. But here it is. They, they always had these outward, look, uh, outward things they can point to to try to milk, make themselves righteous, man. But their spirit wasn't right. For though thou wash thee with nitri and make and take thee much soap yet thine iniquity is marked before me saith the lord god so here it is you know even until this day we have this ritual of baptism this has always been all right even going back to the sons of aaron 
ritual rituals dealing with washing with water that is a big part of our as israelites those are customs that were required even under that first covenant we'll show you right so the 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 the, the washing jake would do they would you know have all of these particular methods to say i'm clean i've washed myself before the lord you know in, in an outwardly way all right and take thee much so yet thine iniquity is marked marked before me see you're doing all of these carnal and you have even today particular israelites who want to push the custom of ritualistic water baptism to be accepted by the lord the true baptism is within as a matter of fact real quick first peter's three or first peter's two i think it's first peter's two give me one second here and you see Jake with the same with that same spirit today. Let's see here. Yep. This is uh 1 Peter 3 and 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards the most high, all right? By the resurrection of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You see? So you're going to have particular Israelites, because not every Israelite woke up to be delivered. A lot of these people just woke up to, to you know, fulfill the lots of the, the two thirds and the bug outs, because there was a lot of bug outs and weirdos and false prophets that also came from amongst Israel. And everybody's back in their lot. That's what you see happening. And some of them uh, through fame. Uh, speeches and good words they are going to make merchandise of the people and get people to believe in this, you know, uh, uh, doctrine that you can be saved by uh, uh, keeping the law. You can keep the law perfectly, you know. OK, or whatever else type of weirdo doctrines out there, you have many of them. But when you look at these camps, everything is about the outward appearance of uh, ISUPK. We wear all black. We got the wristbands. When did, when did Christ ever tell us to put on purple? Purple is a royal color. Black is a is a, a, a dark. Oh, we never glorified in black in our culture. When you when you go into the scriptures and you see black, it's usually associated with a negative event. Case in point, when it says Judah is mourning, the gates there of language, they're black into the ground. Why was that? Because they were in mourning. They were in famine. Okay, what happens when a dark-skinned person uh, 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 is malnourished they get darker so uh, uh, jeremiah saw our people in a, in a morning state he said it in the book of uh uh uh, uh lamentations okay uh that our skin was uh black upon us because of the terrible famine you see but here it is they're, they're boasting in, in the fact that they have have this militant vibe and that they wear all black that makes them some some somehow a, a tough guy or a rough guy or more spiritual than you okay everybody's talking about what they're doing we're gonna be the best school get uh, sign up to my website sign up to buy my dvd look we got the skits coming Ooh, we got the cd coming we got the album coming we got the boots coming we got cologne we 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 and this word is being used by these people to 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 bind you into this a uh, uh, carnal way of being an Israelite where your internal is not being cleansed. And you can look at the behavior of a lot of these people, man. So you're going to have Israelites raise up and gather following because what? The carnal man needs his prophet. You see? So the baptism in, 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 in which uh, going into our customs was always a part of it you know jake here it is it says that uh, uh jeremiah 2 and 22 you wash yourself with a uh, nitri a cleansing agent and take the much so yet your iniquity is marked before the lord your inward man ain't is, is off okay jeremiah 4 and 14 oh jerusalem wash thine heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved how long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? So the true washing, the true baptism that the Lord has always had fought with, with Israel is their spirit. Israel did a good job of outwardly, you know, carnal things and, and, and putting on a show. That's always been Israel's 
uh, mo. But when it comes to being obedient through through the mo uh, to the Most High through His Son, Jake doesn't want to do that. They don't want to acknowledge Him as High Priest, and that's what John the Baptist represented. Okay, because here it is. Remember, He is from the priestly lineage. Okay. So we had a temple around here. This John the Baptist comes on the scene. He's born of a priestly uh, lineage dealing with the sons of Aaron. How do we know? His father was in charge of keeping the incense, the, the, the incense burning. Because if we want to get technical, if we want to, uh, 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 you know, put, you know, particular binds. OK, and, and bind people to particular customs as a as a must do in order to be an Israelite. Or to be accepted. Well, what about the, the burning of the incense? Okay, that's a that's a lot. Okay, morning, uh, 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 uh evening. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Now you'll say, well, we don't have a, a, a physical temple. Well, what what do you have? You have a spiritual temple. Ultimately, this sacrifice that we're offering up, we're the incense. You see what I'm saying? We're the sacrifice. You, your, your life represents, okay, as we're going to uh, show you, the, the fulfillment of the law. You see? But as it says in the book of 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. All right? 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, man. Hold up. Real quick. 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. And the 15th verse says, but even unto this day, Mo, when Moses is read, when you go into the law, the veil is upon their heart. You see that? See, these men are still blinded by a veil. Even when I was listening to Deacon Hakka's video that he did going into my video, his explanation and his standpoint of the scriptures, it's a very carnal, you know, way of thinking about how those script you know the way he breaks the bible down the way he thinks it's a very carnal and, and, it, and it makes sense you know because we remember these are these this is the sakari these weren't the followers of yahweh shai these were the sakari zealots now you had zealots that left these these particular lifestyles and follow yahweh shai but they didn't go forward that uh zealot mindset so you under you're starting to see the blockage in the holy spirit that these men don't have why because they don't uh, uh uh acknowledge truly acknowledge now openly they say it you see what they with their with their mouths do they praise me but their works are far from me you see they don't really reverence the son of the most high as their way back to him they think that by these carnal uh, uh uh you know technicalities that came with that first covenant and that priesthood that they can point out and boast in and, and and sell it as a lifestyle because see here it is you you're uh, binding people to the fringes but then you making them so they come to you so it's a it, it becomes you you take p particular parts of the doctrine and you make a business of it but these people are just coming into being an israelite but they're not they don't understand you're not reverencing the son of the most high so they don't even get the point they're just seeing people get cut. They, they, they see the fringes. You're not eating pork. You, you do the little Passover. Right? And you're an Israelite. Internally, they're, they're not submitting themselves. Hey, what does the scripture say? You got, you, you got to embrace the son. And, and the son, Yahweh Shai, fulfilled the law. And that's what the people don't get. He fulfilled it. He did it. <laughs> He's the fringe. Everything under that first covenant leads to Yahweh Shai. Everything. He fulfilled it all. <laughs> so when the law is read, 2 Corinthians 3 and 15, but even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is on their heart, their mind. And what does that veil represent? When you went into the inner court in the temple, you had the holy place. Okay, and then you had the Holy of Holies, which separated the holy place from the Holy of Holies in that temple. Okay, was this veil. All right, it was a veil, man. And it had to be made of a particular material. Now, what did that represent? 
okay that represented israel's access to the most high but the only person who could enter into the holy of holies and actually commune directly with the most high through his mercy seat through his word <laughs> which was yahweh shai okay was ultimately through this temple okay and that was our access all right and it was it was through the sons of aaron only aaron and his sons were the only ones who could go into the holy of holies all right they would uh go in on the day of atonement to offer up a sacrifice you know um for themselves and for the nation of israel okay this was israel's way back to the father this was israel access point okay so when you read this second corinthians 3 and 15 but even unto this day when moses is read when you go into the law the veil is still upon their heart which is their mind okay because their their access stops at that temple this is why you see them boast and you know particular technicalities in the law and particular things and they don't give the glory unto the son of the most high god for his sacrifice their their doctrine isn't centered around being obedient to his way his his approach to doing things they're not into that you see they want to uh, be israelites that boast in these outwardly customs all right that israel has been known to boast in and be into above obedience in spirit so when moses is read when we go into the laws that, that veil is still in their heart now the veil when when yahweh shai died on the cross what happened when he yielded up the ghost matthew 27 and 50 yeah uh when yahweh shai when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost okay and behold the veil of the temple was rent in twain see that from from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks uh rent now this is when yahweh completed his task <laughs> all right pretty much of course he had to you know uh go into the earth and then you know resurrect all right but he, he filled his duty as the sacrifice so what happened was the veil that separated the holy of the holies from the rest of the, the the holy place and the rest of the temple okay uh, uh it rent meaning now we have access back to the father and it's not through a particular high priest after the order of Aaron. it's through the high priest in the heavens you see that so when, when, when see <laughs> their access to the spirit and i'm listening to deacon hakan and i'm like this dude's He's he has a very I mean these guys come across like they're this very uh, you know articulate and, and you know have ways of manipulating and you know words and but they're very base in their understanding of the spirit of the Bible I will say that they have a very limited understanding in the spirit because ultimately they don't exalt the Son and it shows it shows in their behavior you know the the way that they walk first off but and when they break it down the scriptures it's not through the spirit because they don't have that access see the elect see that's what yahweh shah is for us he's our access point back to the most high you see and they don't see it that way they could they they think they can point to something that is the, uh their access and that makes them a uh, uh, righteous or that you know but they deny the way they're not walking all right uh, uh, and following a land whithersoever you go they're trying to go up some other way and that's what the sakari zealots did before time okay that's what they did back in rome when yahweh was on the scene okay this is romans 5 and 2 by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand see it was always access that's what that temple and that first priesthood represented was our access to the father through through doing these carnal uh ordinance and these particular things this was your access back to the father and it was through a particular order now under this new covenant we're coming into what order are we going to be under it's the order of melchizedek yahweh shy man now this is ephesians 2 and 18 this is what i really wanted it says 
for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father now through yahweh his sacrifice gives us access back to our father contrary to a particular temple to a particular place on the earth the holy of the holies no yahweh is in the most holiest he's in the he's in the holy of holies on the right hand side <laughs> you see that's the high priest and john the baptist who was of that priestly lineage of aaron okay listen to what he says and and see these things are going to only be accepted through the spirit by the elect those who have ears to hear and that's the only ones it's for for a lot of these guys they, there's a blockage in access they don't have a particular access yet yeah, the lord woke them up to the fact that they're israelites but there's a in the spirit there's a blockage there's particular things that they you know like when yahweh was on the scene he said i am the bread that came down from heaven i am the showbread in the temple you you have particular eat me what will you have particular people thinking he said nigga uh he's saying we got to eat him nigga what type of you know cannibal what type of shit is that you know just being but outrageous man like come on man but he was letting you know that the things that came with that first temple everything was centered around his coming and what he represents for us he is our access and he's building a spiritual temple through our spirits all right each spirit of the elect okay represent a stone in that temple in the in the main building of the temple is fulfilled in the 144,000 because that's the, the 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 priesthood after the order of Melchizedek directly you have Yahweh Shai and the 144 who's at the head of it all right the first one is, is King David under Yahweh Shai that's a government that's a priesthood you see and, and and the whole nation through that order is going to have access back to the father into this new covenant okay Yahweh Yahweh Shai the, the 144 of course the 12 at the head of that you see <laughs> that's the government body that's the priesthood but what order will it be under? Will it be under the order of Aaron? No. This dude, Sakari, even tells you in the kingdom there's going to be a temple where only the sons of Aaron are going to be sacrificing. Why would he say that? Because he, his access, he ain't he ain't one of Yahweh's eyes, man. They say it. They try to present it, but they don't walk it, man. All right? They're not walking it. They're not, they're, they, don't, they don't respect Yahweh's eye. And they openly said, you, we don't, you don't have to worship Yahweh Shai. They openly tell you, Paul, who was taught by Yahweh Shai, is not the word of God. It's, it's, some of his words are the word of God. Some of it ain't. He's, you know, Paul's not, uh, he's not, he's no authority. But then Peter co-signed Paul. The book of Hebrews is not the word, of, it's not, uh, we can't uh, uh, authenticize and emphasize all that bullshit. We can't, we can't, uh, the, the, the book of Hebrews, but then you use it out of context, might I add, out of context, because you're trodden under the foot, the uh, uh, sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, by thinking that you, by your own righteousness, can get back to the Father. <laughs> yep. And that's a proud thing, man. Now, let's, let's read what John the Baptist thought of Yahweh Shai and what he said. Because remember, he was baptizing Israelites. He wasn't baptizing heathen. No, he was baptizing Israelites. Okay, in a river Jordan, preparing them for Yahweh Shah. Now, listen to what he says. Now, baptism, remember, we went into how baptism is a custom of ours going way back. And we'll show you even in the priesthood. This is Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. You see, water uh, uh, cleansing was a part of our ritualistic cleansing back to the Father, but it was carnal. It was only something you can show and look, look at me. I'm clean now, right? But your spirit wasn't right. But he that cometh after me, all right, is mightier than I. Okay, so coming from that priestly uh, uh, lineage, here it is. He's letting you know this is the high priest. Look, what I did was with water. That's how I cleansed you through an outward way, through something on this earth. 
this one is going to cleanse you from the 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 the, the inside he's going to write those laws in you and it starts with you walking in his his spirit walking in his way okay now he said i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance now let's just type in aaron and water okay This is Exodus 29 and 4. And Aaron and his sons shall thou bring into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash them with water. Okay. And thou shall bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. Okay. So water washing was always a part of the custom of the nation of Israel. Now, in this time, if you don't actually wash yourself, does that mean you're not uh, uh, clean to be a priest? Absolutely not. And you still have Israelites who want to come to the page. No, baptism, if you're not baptized with water, but they don't understand. Look, listen to what John is saying. Okay. Listen to what John is saying. Coming from that priestly lineage, directly of Aaron, okay? <laughs> Matthew 3 and 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, all right? Remember that first covenant? Remember those rituals and the particular things that came with that temple, that priesthood, that covenant? But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He's going to purge us through walking in his way. We're being purged of all of these infirmities to be acceptable sons back to the most high when he sees his image in us. So we don't have to boast in the playbook. We are the playbook. You see, we're not going to have to go to a particular uh, ordinance and law to know what and what not to do. We're walking in that way. That's the point of it all. That was the point of everything under that first covenant. That that the, the reason we couldn't do it was this flesh. But Yahawashai came in the same kind of flesh we got all right, and conquered death, man, so that we could have access back to him. And what did he do? He fulfilled the, 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 the law. Okay? He took on the burden. As if the, 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 the whole curse and the whole point of our, of our punishment, he took it upon himself. Okay? So now we don't have to go through a particular uh, uh, Levite priest who has to be cleansed by water and all these various different things. We have direct access to the Father now. So all of these uh, ritualistic, you know, uh, John is letting you know, I'm baptizing you with water, but... The, the true high priest is mightier than me. There's a better covenant. There's a better way. Okay. Even when we just read, let's go back. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 2 and 22. For though thou wash thee with nitri and make thyself much soap, yet is thine iniquity marked before me, saith the Lord God. Now, when you go to the uh, so-called scholars, this is a uh, Benson commentary. All right. It says, Though thou shouldest use ever so many methods of washing away thy sins, because that's what the water always represented. Okay, you're renewed, you're forgiving, you're washed, you're clean. Okay, so it says such as rights, the rights of expectation, of expectation. expatian prescribed by the law or practiced by adulterers though thou shouldest insist ever so much upon thine own innocence and righteousness yet the marks or stain of thy sins will ever appear before uh, the sight of the Lord okay till they are done away by his pardoning mercy exercised towards thee all right in the consequence of thy repentance and reformation and that repentance, all right, uh, comes through Yahawashai, understanding his sacrifice, why he uh, uh, went through that, that horrid 
you know, brutal three hours of, of torture, man. I mean, goodness gracious, what he did, you know? So, so again, going back to what we were reading, John the Baptist is even telling you, if you, if you understand, you see, that this is a greater priesthood. This is the high priest. This is Shiloh who was to come and bring you the law. <laughs> the one that was going to come through the loins and lineage of David. He sent, he, this is the high priest. See, let's just type in high priest real quick in the book of Hebrews. Okay. So could you imagine, okay, being bound to that first covenant? Okay, and then having to have a temple, having to have, you know, uh, the sons of Aaron, because you can't just uh, the, do take, some of the law and say I can do it all but then say well I can't do the priesthood part well nah you say you can do the law perfectly but even if we did have a, a, a standing temple you still go off but you don't think you would let's see here Hebrews 4 and 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest you don't acknowledge Yahweh Shai as your high priest. You're still boasting as you're in yourself as a priest. Okay? Which we are a priest, but after what order? You're still talking about Aaron. John the Baptist, man, he, he, he separated from the temple. He wanted nothing to do with that garbage they were on. And he could have boasted in his position. The temple, he, he you know, we the temple now. Seeing then we have a such a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Okay? So Yahweh is the high priest, man. Hebrews 7 and 26, for such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And if you don't go through him as your access point and you try to downplay him as your access point back to the Father, then you don't understand the, the, the whole uh, 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 Bible. You, you don't get it. There's a blockage. Again, what, what did we read? See? 2 Corinthians 3 and 15, which this whole chapter is good. But even to this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. They, you don't have, you're blocking it, the access. See, that, that veil was rent for a reason. Because all 12 tribes now have access. What did, remember, what did Peter say? We are a holy priesthood offering up spiritual sacrifices. You see? And it's not so much about the outward appearance, it's about the way we walk more above anything. You see? Even going into the beautiful garments, which we brought out. Okay, let's get it. Isaiah 52 and 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. You see, there's camps that take that more literal than spiritual. Okay, they don't look at it as the way that they walk and becoming a new man. Stop ha not handling things according to the old man. The way that you handle things as a nigga, you try to bring it into the truth and handle it that way. No. Remember... The, the the how you do your brother your your walk amongst the brotherhood all right has to be orderly according to the spirit you can't just have the fringes on and walk through all parts of brotherhood uprooting any uh, male authority that was placed over you speaking to you alazar any male authority that was placed over you you've openly bucked up against it in front of all israel you haven't showed the uh qualities of a, of a true humble leader man you're never wrong, and then when you when you do say you're wrong, then you want to point everything else. It can't just just be that you're wrong. You see, and Yahweh Shai, that's not the way that his men would be walking in, man. And 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 you haven't put on the beautiful garments. Now you may have a garment, in a in a carnal sense, but when when it says put on thy, uh, uh beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. The holy city henceforth there shall no more be come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean and that can only happen uh, uh through the spirit 
You can't say anything carnal or anything you wear will take away uh, uh, unclean impurities in, in your flesh. No, that won't happen, man. Nothing in your flesh could bring you into perfection. Nothing we do can bring us to, into perfection or to where unclean doesn't enter into it. Only through Yahweh Shah we're going to get that after the order of Melchizedek where we will be direct, uh, 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 you know, extensions of the Most High. All right. Under Yahweh Shai. Death won't have any reign over us, man. So the beautiful garment starts with us changing our spirit. And how we walk, how we how we think, who we are. All right, you got women with the fringes on and a head wrap, checking a man phone, giving a man hell, being proud, talking shit with the fringes on. Okay, you got men with the fringes on committing adultery, calling on the wrong name, openly after saying the real name, which the, the law says, take not the name of the Lord in vain. So here it is. You got all of these camps boasting in all of these outward, with, with these outward uh, 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 ordinances, but their spirit ain't right. And it's too much of that in Israel. Period. It's become a, a fashion show to have fringes. It's become, you know, the the, the this, you know, badge of honor, and the the sun's not getting uplifted, man. The sun of the Most High. Which fulfilled that law. He fulfilled, He is what you look to to know what what and what not to do. You don't have to look to anything in the flesh or, or on your clothing to know not to do good or bad. See? So shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. Jerusalem. Okay? And that's an old custom when you would sit for a while and dust would collect on your garment you would shake it off and what has what, what, what has polluted our nation uh, wicked thoughts evil uh, evil cultures so you shake that off and loose yourself from the bands of thy neck being in captivity to, to the lies of this world you see but you have men that'll take this and say see we, our garment's got to be nice you can't be walking around with no wrinkled garment and they miss the whole purpose of the beautiful garments as we read it yesterday in the book of revelation the 16th chapter okay revelation the 16th chapter in the 15th verse behold i come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments all right lest he walk naked and they see his shame now is his garment speaking of and you have people who really think and walk their lives that if they don't have on their fringes they're not going to be found worthy there's people who are walking around the earth thinking this under particular high level teachers who, who, who lead thousands upon hundreds of thousands of israelites they have them in bondage to that thought to where now they they, they become self-righteous and their fear starts to be more towards uh, uh, everything on the outward and but but when it comes to the, what the the first of all the name of the most high and his son okay the, the 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 prophecies the spirit of prophecy everything has to be through yahweh shy man <laughs> he's the volume of the book and when you diminish him you're not why you don't have on the garments as a matter of fact uh What's that scripture? Maybe it'll be in a precept. I know it's in the book of Matthews. All right, the book of Matthews. Matthew. Let's see. Let's see. Hold up. Ooh, this is a good one. It's Revelation 3 and 18. I counsel thee to buy of me, this is Yahweh Shai speaking, gold tried in the fire. Okay, go through that purging process where you purge off the old man and you go through the fire, all right? You know, in, 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 in obedience unto a true son of the Most High, all right, through your inward man, that thou mayest be rich 
in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and, the, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. You see, so the clothing and the raiment had a, a carnal presence in that first covenant, you see. But now they have more of a spiritual, okay, uh, 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 meaning that we are supposed to take on for the purpose of actually walking in a particular way. Without a play, without having to go to this playbook, that play, you know, this this technique. No, no, you're walking it. And Yahweh Shai redeemed us from the curse of the law. The punishments that comes with the technicalities of that first covenant, he redeemed us from that. He took that uh, uh, that that bind off of us. So we keep the laws, but we don't worry ourselves with all of these carnal technicalities which don't make you any more righteous than the next man and, and we walk in the spirit above all man that's the the raiment the inward man as we went into yesterday or the other day that the heavenly father through his son is really concerned with and that's fire that's walking through the fire when you actually purge <laughs> all right particular uh, impurities in your spirit you change the way you think into obedience. Right? This is uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 8. It says, let thy garments always be white and let thy head lack no ointment. Now, these are all customs going into our culture. You would have to have the garment. You would have to have the, the border of blue, the fringes. All right, but then the, the the priest would have the linen garment, and white rep represents what purity, right? And your your spirit got to be pure. It says, "Let thy head lack no ointment." Okay, we had the 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 oil, you know, which you should anoint. You know, you should get anointing oil. You should anoint. You should do all of these things to the best of your ability, right? But guess what? The true anoint. The true ointment is the spirit above anything that we can do carnally through the Holy Spirit. But the Heavenly Father does look down upon obedience in the spirit as the end all be all of who you are. When he judges you, he's not going to judge you by things you did on camera. All right. More than who you were off camera. OK, because you can put on the show on camera. And present yourself as a super Israelite, but then your walk and the way you live your life could be totally off in the spirit. <laughs> and you have a lot of that going on in Israel, man. Okay, so let thy garments always be white and let thine head lack no ointment. Okay, is, is, in, 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 is this a in a carnal sense? It can be taken carnally if you know the history of Israel, but really this has... A more of a um, a uh, spiritual meaning. All right. As a matter of fact, when you get Revelation, the nineteenth chapter, because you got a lot of niggas with fringes, man. You got a lot of niggas with uh, border of blue. You got a lot of niggas with, with, with garments. You got a lot of niggas doing all types of stuff. You got a lot of niggas with head wraps. Lint niggas with meat trees. Okay. Remember. Some of the worst acts we've seen in Israel came from people who either had fringes on or pushed the fringes heavily. <laughs> so those fringes never stopped you from doing wickedness. But following uh, 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 in the path of Yahweh Bashim Shai will stop you from doing wickedness. You'll know when to stop. OK. You, you, you'll have a, a ultimately a guide. Through the spirit where you don't have to constantly be like, okay, I should I should be doing this or should I not be doing this? It becomes who you are. Revelation 19 and 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor unto him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife have made herself ready. Now, there's one scripture. Let me see here. I was looking for it. 
It's in Matthew. Hold up. Yep. Right here. Woo, this is a cold one too. The parable of the marriage feast because the most high <laughs> being married back to the nation of Israel goes through Yahweh Shai. Okay. And this is likened to a marriage feast. Now, when you go to um when you go to um Matthew twenty-two and nine, all right, he tells his servants what? Go ye therefore into the highways and the byways, and as many as ye find, bid to the marriage. Okay, you bid them to the marriage. This is the marriage, but the marriage is through Yahushai. Under that first covenant, the marriage was through Aaron, Moses, a, a tabernacle, a temple, car, you know, carnal ordinances and, and washings and particular things. See that? Which you failed at. You were a horrible wife. <laughs> All right. Bid to the marriage. So those servants went out to the highways and the byways and gathered together as many as they found both bad and good. OK, and you're going to have bad. You're going to have crazy ass jakes that come amongst you spots at the feast. Right. You're going to have good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. All right. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw. There was a man which had on no wedding garment. <laughs> and he said unto him, How camest thou in hither having no wedding garment? All right. And he was speechless. Then said the, the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and, and gnashing of teeth. So here it is. You got a lot of people who, 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 are, who are in this Israelite walk. You see, but they give no, they don't have no idea what's going on. Their spirit ain't right. And Yahweh Shai was able to look into people's spirit and see whether they were right or not, man. Okay. So he's the high priest, man. You see, and if you ain't got the, 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 the true wedding garment on. Okay, what, what's going to happen? You're going to be cast into out. You're going to be through. Revelation 19 and 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come. His wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Because under that first covenant, all you have to do is just type in linen. Let's see. Here. Okay. And you'll see that they're, they're you know. There's a lot dealing with it, you know. Even when the sacrifices were done, you know, particular sacrifices, the priest would have to put on his linen garment. Okay, which the the, the linen is symbolic of purity. Right? Now he boasts in the priesthood of Aaron, is he doing that? Absolutely not. No no one's able to do this because Yahweh Shai freed you from those technicalities through him being the high priest, which is why you should give him all praise. Okay, and now instead of you walking around the earth trying to find all linen shirts and and, and, and binding yourself to these technicalities, that that ultimately you, you spend so much time in that you don't grow in the spirit. Well, your spirit is representative of that white linen. You see? Revelation 19, okay, it says uh, in 7, the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready, the elect, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, all right, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, okay, and what makes you righteous is, is, is nothing you can do. Okay, what makes you righteous and justified is being chosen from the foundation of the earth to be a part of Yahweh Shah's body. Okay? <laughs> the point blank period. All right, now as we walk this walk, all right, we we focus on perfecting and you know, uh, uh, being obedient. Okay? But what we're saying is Yahweh Shah freed us from the technicalities of 
everything that came with your relationship to the father under that first covenant okay so to find linen now instead of you going around trying to find all linen clothing all linen t-shirts to put the fringes on you're the linen your spirit you see and you all are in bondage unto that 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 first covenant in those ways and those rituals and those rites and then you're putting men and women in bondage to that to make merchandise of them let's get that real quick and you don't think the father sees you second Peter, second Peter. one second here this is a uh, second Peter's two and one but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you Whose pri who, who, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Okay? See, they deny the Lord that brought them. Okay? <laughs> and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of, of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And these dudes are presenting unto you a very carnal perspective of the Bible. It's, that's not really tied to much spirituality because the Sakari weren't spiritual. A lot of these camps aren't spiritual. They're carnal men that know that they're Israelites. They, they're able to put on a show and scream and yell and do this or do that or be on one cadence or match, you know, have the same Jordans on. Have, you know, they're able to do all of these things, but their spirits are not right, man. Okay, and you have camps outside of Great Millstone who are on point. All right, but they're following the right doctrine. They're in the right spirit as well. And somebody's got to be right. Okay, yeah, you, you had your favorites and this and this and that. But the, at the end of the day, you you these things are happening so you can be presented with, with, with the both perspectives. See, Israel should be watching right now. Those of you who are just coming in. You should be watching right now and being very, very careful and being very and, and seeing what the look because this is all happening for a reason. But what is the Lord saying? It says, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Whose whose <laughs> judgment now of a long time linger and not in the damnation and their damnation slumber. And I mean, and they're going to be destroyed, man. And Yahweh Shai, when he walked up into the temple and saw them, you know, making merchandise of the, uh, and, 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 you know, which the, the priesthood was a functioning, you know, they were the bankers of Israel as well, but they were taking that and making it into something carnal and wicked, man. Selling fringes, doing, doing the same thing Jake doing today. Okay, taking the, the focus off of the, the spiritual aspect of what's happening here because we're a spiritual people. And when this Bible is taught in spirit, it is so beautiful, man. You see? It's beautiful, man. So they're going to make merchandise of you. That's what they're going to do. They're going to make merchandise of you. What's this word, merchandise? Strong's G, 1710. I'm going to just hit to the point. Of course, we know the trading part of it. But to use a person or a thing for gain. And that's what they're doing to you Israelites. And you're allowing them to do it. So, you, hey, uh, as, the, as the Lord said, you're not going to have any cloak. You're not going to have any cloak. And, and what's going to happen? You're going to be judged under those first covenant standards like you want it. You're going to get the smoke that you asked for from the Lord, man. But anyway, I'll come back with another part to this. Shalom.